Hello, hello, hello. We are live. Okay, bear with me one second. I'm just going to share. Hello, hello, lovely people. If you are watching this on replay, you can probably forward the first minute. I'm just making sure this is all working and going to share this into my Facebook community. So I hate your advice for entrepreneurs. Uh, there I am. So, hello, 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 everybody. How are you doing this wonderful, windy Wednesday? Well, if you're London, if you're in London or well, the UK, it is wonderfully windy. So, um, as you can see, hold on, bear with me one second. I'm just going to also go live on Instagram, double bubble. Hello, hello there. Hi, good afternoon. Hi, I'm Melanie Foots Mayers. I am founder and managing director of Eden Mayers HR Consulting, um, and that is HR Consulting to keep you out of trouble and delivering your passion. Um, and it is our goal to help you to fulfil your full um, aspirations. So, as you can see, the title of this live. Well, not if you're on Instagram, because you can't put titles on your live on Instagram. We have to talk to them about that. Um, but yes, the title um, uh, of this live is Getting the Role That Helps You to Live Out Your Aspirations. And I woke up this morning and it's just been like a crazy couple of weeks. There's been a lot going on. And it's that general thing. It's the new year. Everybody has some time off over Christmas and they start thinking about what they want to do, where they want to be, where, where they start assessing where they are and where they'd like to be in life. And so they have great plans and great aspirations to what they're doing, what they're going to do going forward. And then we all know that then, um, you know, people, you start off really great. So you start going to the gym every day and eating really healthily and drinking health shakes and then a few weeks down the line which is where we are now um it all starts to fall by the wayside so for the last couple of weeks i have been working really hard with my clients i've been doing a bunch of different things so from restructure you know looking at restructuring their organizations looking at recruiting new people and changing the structure slightly looking at delivering new models and um, also where I where we work with individuals doing career coaching um, we've had a lot of stuff going on because applications closed for universities in the UK on Monday so you had to apply by Monday for a UCAS in order to get place um, in university this September um, so the next opportunity will be at clearing so once everybody's got their results and they know whether they've got their offered space and then other spaces might become available so everybody's been really planning for their greatness planning for how they're going to achieve all the amazing things that they want to do and so I've had a few new clients who've come through um, who want to either create um, a business but obviously need to work to bring in an income until they're managing to um get their business making enough money so that they can give up their job um or people who have a side hustle who want to make it their main hustle and again need to work out and plan how they're going to balance all of those things together so i figured as we are at, you know 17th of the month and you're probably getting a little bit wary you've been trying really hard to get all of these things done that i just share a few tips with you about what you can do to help you get the role 
that helps you to live out your aspirations. So that can be the role that helps you tra transition from your side hustle to being, uh, you know, having a side hustle to being a full time business owner. Um, it can also be that you want to do more in the role that you so you want. You're happy to be an employee, um, but you're ready for more. You're not where you want to be. You're not doing the job that you want to do. You're not in the salary that you want to. Or it could be other things. It could be I'm not having work life balance that I'd like. I'm not getting um, the recognition that I'd like. I'm not working with the kind of clients that I really love. All of those, all of those good things. So irrespective of whether you are a business owner or you are someone who's employed and you want to stay employed or aspire to be a business owner, I wanted to talk to you about the things that you need to do to keep the momentum going, to achieve what you need to achieve, to live up to your full potential and to get all the things that you aspire to receive. So number one, and I know it's a bit boring, but still, is planning. So you have to have a plan. Um, so it's pointless in me saying um, I'm going to have 10 new clients every month if I'm not doing anything to get those 10 clients. Likewise, it's useless in me saying I'm going to get a new job that's going to pay me 10 grand more if I'm not doing the things I need to do, whether that is um, upskilling my qualifications, whether that is updating my CV, whether that is applying for jobs. Like, you know, generally speaking, things do not fall down from the heavens. So you have to think about how are you going to do those things. Um, so, you know, the thing that I always say about planning is, number one, know what you want. So know what it is that you would like. And that's something that I always ask my clients. Um, and, and it's interesting that once you start thinking about what you want, what comes up. So sometimes it is, I only want to work four days a week. Sometimes it is, um, I don't want to work the weekends. Sometimes it's, I want to earn this salary and I don't want to have to travel more than 40 minutes or I want to be able to travel by bus. I don't want to get on the tube. There are, there are different things that are important to you. And I found that as I've spoken to different clients, you know, I'd be like, oh no, go for this. It'll be great. It'll be fine. And, you know, you get trained there. Everything's all right. No, no, this is not what I want. This is not the work-life balance that I need. So you need to be really clear these are the things that I want and you need to, you know, get your journal, get pen and paper and write down these are the things that I want. The next thing you need to do is you need to also detail the things that you don't want. So, you know, if you don't want to be expected to work overtime, if you don't want to travel beyond the M25, if you um you know, for example, I'm going to take HR as an example. If you never want to write an employment contract ever again, those kind of things. So, like, these are the things that I love. These are the things that I want in, um, in in this role. Or these are things that I need my business to do, and these are the things that I don't want to do. I don't ever want to do them. And then be really clear about that. And you need to keep that at the forefront of your mind. So, you know, then you know this is the thing that I'm looking for. So, I'm going to give you an example. I have a client who um, had spent some time, um, you know, being a stay-at-home mum and was ready to go back to work, but she had very specific criteria about what she wanted. So she only wanted to work between three and four days a week. She didn't want her commute to be more than 45 minutes because she knew, like, the timings of getting back to collect her children from after school club and all of those good things. Um, she also wanted them to invest in her upskilling her qualifications because that was important to her and she wanted the ability to work from home if she needed to so if her children were sick or she wanted to attend um you know an assembly or something she wanted to know that she that she was able to do that she knew that she didn't want to work full-time because she's kicking off her awesome side hustle so she wanted to make sure she had enough time to work on that um, and she, so she knew this, these were the things that I wanted, that she wanted. And then, um, she started applying, started finding roles and she started, so, you know, we worked together on a CV and all those good things together. And then she started saying, these are the, um, 
you know, I found this job, I found this job. What do you think of this now? What do you think of this? And some of the stuff she sent me was great, amazing, apply, you know, yes, you should apply for it. This is what we need to do, getting her sorted. And she did that. But there were other things that she found. And because it ticked, I don't know, the salary and it ticked the, the hours, but it didn't tick the work-life balance hours, she she still sent it forward. And I said, okay, I thought you didn't want this. I thought you didn't want that. And it was like, oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So is that an important thing? Yes, it's important. Okay, fine. Toss that. Don't apply for that. So you need to be really clear about what it is that you that you want. And this is what this applies to whether you know whether or not you're looking for your, like forever job or the job that's going to keep you going for your side hustle. But it also applies to your business. So you have to know what you want. Often with businesses, we talk about ideal clients, and then and an opportunity presents itself, and you don't go back to that list of these are things that I want to do. These are things that I don't want to do. Um, and you say yes to that client and then you've got a client that is, you know, hell for you. And all you're thinking about is how long, how long before I can get this project done. So like in the same way, both with your business and, you know, and, and personally, you need to make sure that you're very clear about those things and you keep going back to that checklist and make sure that those things are being ticked off. So that's know what you want, know what you don't want. Um, and then the other thing is then once you know those things you need to break down the steps so as I talked about um I talked about my client she, you know we broke down the steps to what she needed to do to find that job so she needed an updated cv we needed to kind of tailor a cover a letter that had you know all of the right paragraphs around her experience and showed you know how awesome she was we made sure she had a bunch so that she could move them around if she needed to to apply for role um, so we made sure we got a CV all good and shiny. We made sure that her cover letter was all good and shiny. We made sure she had a list of what she wanted and what she didn't want. Um, and then also, you know, made sure she was prepared for interviews. So skilled her, trained her up, and made sure that all of those, all of that stuff was happening. And then she had to actually sit down and look for roles. So she she knew what her ideal um what industry sector she wanted to be in she knew kind of what you know what where she wanted to be in London where she wanted to work so she focused on looking at those organizations go so directly going to their websites for example and having a look and seeing what they've got um and so and you know with your business so I guess with me it can you know for example if I'm advertising I'm going to I pick I pick my region so I'm East London, so it might be Kent and Essex and a bit of East London or what have you. So you work out what you work out what you're looking for. So she made sure that she had her plan and she found those roles. And if she found those roles, reassessed them according to that list of do's of wants and not wants, and then applied. So there are steps to be followed. So you need to make sure that when you're looking at what you want, look at the steps that you need to follow. Now, when you're looking at building your business, you might start off with, I'm just looking for one great client and then okay i need to replicate that and then you know the following month i need to have like three clients and the following month i need to have six clients etc etc with building your career hi hi mr dalvin how are you doing um with your um career it may well be that i'm in you know i'll go back to hr i'm a hr advisor but i want to be a hr business partner there might be a role in between that you need to do. So you might be looking at what qualifications you need and you might be looking at what um, what qualifications you might need to do to get you to the next role. And you might also be looking at there might be another step. So you just need to be clear about what those steps are. Oh, Mr. Davin, working very hard. Make sure that you're drinking lots of water. Make sure that you're having something to eat as well you need to nourish yourself if you're working hard to continue working hard um so um what's next yes so make sure you write down the steps and then the other thing is be focused make sure you are razor focused on laser focused rather on what it is that you want to do so once you know what that thing is and you've identified it really really ensure that you are focused on making sure that those tasks happen write them down in your calendar or if you you know your diary if you like paper or put them on your task list or your emails if you prefer to do it online put it as a reminder on your 
iPhone or Android or whatever you've got, make sure that you know these are the things I need to do and these are the times that I need to do it and that you've detailed it so that you know these are things I need to do on a day-to-day -day basis or week-to-week -week basis to achieve the outcome that I'm looking for. And then finally, um, avoid shiny, <laughs> shiny object syndrome. So I'm looking down here at my notes. So the shiny object system, you know, that is, you know, pretty much around the being focused. But very often when I speak to people who are setting up to do something different, who are setting up to build um, their business or setting up, you know, looking at developing themselves or is going to university or looking for a new role, often they get distracted. So um, I had uh, a particular client who um, was awesome at her job, did really well, but she wasn't, she wasn't being paid what she ought to be for what she's doing. Um, we did a bit of market research on that and I spoke, uh, you know, and I spoke to her and also spoke to her about the role and how it was going and she decided actually she was going to look for something else. So we did all of that. She applied, she had interviews, she was successfully offered, offered a role. And then when she went to hand in her notice, her employer then offered her, you know, some more money and, and, and a few other bits and pieces. And and there was this, this shiny object syndrome. I've been here for a while. I know what this situation's like. I know the organization. Maybe I'll just stay and take the extra money and I won't, and I won't go. And so she made a decision to stay and not go. Um, but then, you know, the situation changed, the roles changed, and actually that same feeling of being undervalued started coming started coming back in again and once again she had to start the process but the market wasn't so good the second time and it took longer to find something else so this is why I'm always saying oof, I don't know if you just heard that but it is super windy um and I'm by my uh, garden door and I can just hear the, the wind rattling the fences on the outside um so yeah so you need to really be Oh, hi, Liana. Um, so, yes, yeah, so you need to um, avoid that shiny object syndrome. You need to remember not to get distracted by something else that's out there. Because often when you decide I'm going to change my career, I'm going to change the thing that I'm doing, suddenly someone will offer you this amazing opportunity, other thing that you were doing before. And then you think, oh, maybe I'll just go back into it. But inevitably, if your heart's really in this new thing that you're doing, that you want to do, you just need to keep focused. You just need to keep the faith. So just to go back to what I was saying, and if you're just coming in on the live now, watch, you know, uh, watch it again, watch the replay. Let me know what you think. Put, you know, put your any questions and your comments in the uh in the comment section. I will be checking it out. But just to go back, remember. If you are trying to either uh, start your own, start your own, start a new business, if you're looking at transitioning your side hustle to your full-time gig to becoming a full-time business owner, if you are looking at developing your career and moving up and achieving your full potential, looking at your aspirational roles, these are the steps that you need to follow. Number one, planning. You need to know, well, number one, you need to plan. To do your plan, these are the things you need to do. So that's number two. Know what you want. Know exactly what you're looking for. Know exactly what you want. Know what is important to you and what is not important to you. Know the things that you want to do and the things that you don't want to do, which leads on to three, which is know what you don't want. So know what you don't want to do and where you don't want to be then no uh, then break down the steps so there are often steps to get you from where you're starting from to from where you need to be so if it's a business it might be the steps of building your business plan you might be the steps of checking out your competitors it might be steps of working out your marketing strategy they're all steps that you need to follow OK, if it's building your business, it might be what qualifications do I need? What training do I need to do? What opportunities can I take up where I currently am? How can I volunteer? 
all of those good things. And then you need to be focused, laser focused, make sure you have um, a, a task list, you've got your outcome, so know what your outcome is for the week, what your outcome is for the month, and then break that down into what your daily outcomes are. Often it looks like a really big thing, but if you break it down with what your daily outcomes are, that really helps. Um, and then um, keep focus on those. So focus on what you need to do. That is your priority. That is what you need to get done. And finally, avoid the shiny object syndrome. Whenever you decide you're going to do something, you're going all out for it, trust me, you will always get distracted. Avoid the distractions. They're not there. Tunnel vision. Avoid the shiny, ignore the shiny, the shiny objects. There's always something going on that can distract you from your path. Keep your eye on the path. Keep focused. Keep the faith. It will happen. So, wow, that was 20 minutes. I wasn't expecting to be long. So, um, thank you so much for spending your lunchtime with me. Um, I hope you found this useful. If you've just jumped on, go back and watch the replay. Um, if you're on Instagram, obviously it will be alive and it will be there for 24 hours. But also, um, if you watch on Instagram, if you go in to our profile, there's quick links which will take you to our Facebook community, which is um, HR Advice for Entrepreneurs. And if you go in there, then the live is also there so you can watch it. It's not going anywhere. For those of you who are watching on Facebook, it's here. It's live. Please watch. Let me know when you've watched the replay. Let me know if you've got any comments, if you've got any questions. Um, what else can I say? Um, also, um, we will have our Q&A, our HR Q&A um, at eight o'clock tonight. We've got HR Q&A again in the Facebook group, um, HR Advice for Entrepreneurs, where you can um, either while we're doing the live ask questions or you can put questions in um beforehand and we will um just sit and reply to any kind of hr questions that you've got i will put that link in the comments on the facebook and again it's in the quick links on my bio on the bio in instagram so enjoy the rest of your day thank you for joining bye bye <laughs>